Hello and welcome to the second part of the Opera Sydney tutorial. This is the modeling of the second outer shell. This tutorial was brought to you by Acrito. The process involved in this tutorial is very similar to the previous one. It's basically almost the same thing. We'll start creating a four shaped line, a line uh, made from four vertices. Uh, we'll add, uh, we'll make a separate line for uh, each of the parts and then we will connect them uh, to create the middle part. So if you remember in the previous tutorial, uh, we've started from the line, we've uh, added um, surface modifier, then edit patch modifier, then shell modifier, then uh, uh, edit poly modifier and uh, afterwards UVV map modifier. Now, th the process will be exactly the same. The only thing that uh, is different is the shape of the uh, of this structure. Okay, so uh, now I'll create the middle part using uh, create line and snap on vertex. And that will refine the middle area. Make sure not to connect the vertices in top. I want to have uh, all shapes made from four lines. Okay, I'll check my reference to see how it looks. Okay, and now I can adjust all the vertices so it will look more accurate. Okay, so when I'm done arranging them, I can do this uh, either from here or I can apply the surface uh, and edit patch modifier. Uh, using with edit patch is way easier than uh, using with splines because edit patch has a handle sub selection and uh, this will allow, uh, this will give us greater control over the uh, curvature. Okay, constantly check your reference. Make sure that uh, those vertices are on the same height as the one near them. Okay, and keep on adjusting everything. Okay, so now I'll add the surface modifier. Make sure it flips. Okay, the threshold is enough, so no vertices are merged. Then edit patch. Now at this point it's very easy to just adjust all vertices and their handles and from now on uh, what I'll do, I will uh, just move the handles to uh, make the shape resemble the original one. Okay, so just keep adjusting every handle. Okay, so I think this will be okay. Now, uh, about those handles, I want to make sure that uh, all the upper handles are about the same height. Now, uh, this is quite important because uh, if there are not, um, there will be some distortion in the, in the general mesh. Okay, so I have uh, several images from different angles, which I'm constantly referring to. Okay, if I want to have uh, an image always on top, we'll open uh, with, with uh, view image option from rendering menu. Keep adjusting all the handles until you have a pretty good result. Now at this point it's easy to work with um, as uh, we have a uh, few handles and uh, this will allow uh, a great flexibility in the modeling process. Make sure that uh, the curvature of uh, each spline looks good from all angles. This is very important at this point because later on it will be harder to change this. So it's best uh, that you spend more time doing this than uh, regretting it later on when you realize that uh, you've done something very wrong. Okay. Now this line looks quite straight, so I'll make sure that the tangents are collinear. Okay, 
can just adjust them, move them around, change the handles. So now, I think I have a pretty much good result right now. Okay, so now let's change the surface properties. We'll add a lot more, about 12 steps to it. Uh, each face uh, will be mapped with uh, UPV map set to face. So basically on each polygon we will have an image stretched. Um, this is a very good procedure to uh, work with as uh, we won't have any problems uh, mapping this. I will erase those vertices as uh, if you look closer you'll realize that uh, uh, there, there's a zone that uh, doesn't really allow me to control the handles. So I'll just erase them because uh, it will look good when, uh, when I'll apply the Mesh Smooth modifier on top. What I want to do is maybe just add one or two segments. Uh, okay, just leave it to one. Uh, this is, uh, this is a good because um, uh, it will affect the overall uh, mapping. Remember, we've, uh, we said that we want to add the UVV map sets to face. You can now add a show modifier. Okay, so uh, it should be pretty much the same thickness as the previous one, as the previous shell, as the pre uh, previous uh, outer shell. Of course, at any point I can uh, go back to edit patch and just change what I want to change there. To select interfaces and hit edit poly. Now what I want to do, I want to detach these uh, polygons. I want to work on them. I want to create the nerves from the inside. Okay, so the first thing I've noticed that... Uh, okay, I need to select all the right part so I can work on it. I don't know what would be the easy way, easier way to do this. Okay, I set it to by angle. 5 degrees, ok, now so I can select this and just detach it to a new editable poly. Ok, so now it will be very easy to work on. I'll do the nerves, ok, so this, this will be the lower part, I will detach this as well. And ok, I will only work on this one, just select all those rings and hit connect. I'll hit extrude. Make sure the base width covers all the lines and just set the height to a reasonable uh, amount. Okay, something like this. And now I'll do the same for the lower part using extrude. I want to make sure that it aligns with the end of the nurse. Okay, something like this. Now I think it looks pretty much good at this point. This won't be so visible. Uh, okay, I will instance the symmetry modifier. Okay. So now I have the pretty much rough shape of it. We'll, we will uh, modify it later on. We'll add the base also, and uh, there will be some changes there. Okay. What I want to do, I want to add the UVV map modifier and set it to face. Remember, we said in the beginning that we wanted to add it to, to set it to face. 
Okay, so this is pretty much it. Shape is ready. Okay, so let's move on to the third part, creating the third outer shell. 